Today in the news, we got some RTX 4000 specs and performance, and an AMD feature gets unlocked. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with NVIDIA. We've heard plenty of leaks and rumors when it comes to the highest end model of their next generation of GPUs. Apparently, the beast, that's the nickname that the leaker gave it, is an 800 watt monstrosity with 18,176 CUDA cores and 48 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory with a data rate of 24 gigabits per second. Now, obviously, this is not for the average gamer. Heck, I don't think it's actually a gamer product. It looks more like a professional GPU to me, like a Quadro A series. But anyways, this is not where most gamers are looking. We're looking at the ones right under that, a hypothetical 4080, 4070, or 4060. So what's new there? Well, first, a couple of days ago, copite 7 kimmy over on Twitter gave us a glimpse on these next-gen models. Here, he says that the RTX 4080 would score around 15,000 points, while the 4070 would score around 10,000 points in Times by Extreme. He also said prior to these tweets that the 4090 could score around 19,000 points. So let's put that into perspective. In the RTX 3000 series, the average RTX 3090 in that same benchmark would score just under 10,000 points. That would put the future RTX 4070 on par or better than an RTX 3090. And of course, the RTX 4080 would blow the 3090 and 3090 Ti out of the water. I mean, to even get close close to 15,000 points, an RTX 3090 Ti needs to be overclocked to an insane 2.85 gigahertz. That's an overclock of 40%, which obviously doesn't happen in a regular case. There's a reason this guy is number one on the leaderboards. That means that the generational leap could potentially be very similar to what we had when we transitioned from the 2000 to the 3000 series, or it could be bigger. It's not a bad deal. Now, if we look at even more recent leaks from Copite 7 Kimmy, there would be an AD104 chip. That tier is usually for the 70 series of GPUs. This specific SKU would have 7,680 CUDA cores. That's the full AD104 chip. It would have 12 gigabytes of GDDR6X at 21 gigabits per second. And it would apparently match the 3090 Ti in terms of performance. The only thing I left out here is that it would apparently have a TDP limit of 400 watts. Wow. Now he said limit, so it could obviously be lower. The only other thing we know is that the RTX 4070 should have 10 gigabytes of GDDR6 and have a TDP of 300 watts. So that other chip is possibly a 4070 Ti. So that's the specs, but there's something else that I wanna mention. Performance numbers, like with TimeSpy Extreme, only covers raster performance. One thing both AMD and Nvidia are actively working on is, well, other technologies like ray tracing and upscaling. Nvidia is on their third generation of tensor cores and second generation RT cores, and it's possible that an RTX 4000 will have fourth generation tensor cores and third generation RT, which would boost performance in these areas. AMD also showed some interest that they are working on AI features with, for example, their AMD noise suppression tech. So I'm sure that more AI stuff is going to come from the red team too, like FSR 3.0. I just think that in the next generation and generations, it's going to be harder to choose a brand. While pure raster performance is definitely the main thing to look at, reviewers are going to have to put all of these other things into consideration when they make their reviews. I've been wanting to talk about that for a while. So let me know what you guys think. Is pure raster performance all you're looking for, or is the entire package more important? Let me know down below. I'll be there uh, reading your comments and uh, possibly interacting with you guys. Moving on, you know that AMD noise suppression feature that we talked about uh, in the last video? Well, it's only compatible with uh, RX 6000 series of desktop GPUs. That's a little bit limiting considering the 5000 series is only one gen behind. And of course, a ton of people bought RX 500 series during the GPU drought. Well, now you can, maybe, get it to work on older GPUs thanks to a modded driver. Now, keep in mind, modded drivers, obviously voids warranty, who cares, can be risky and can cause instability on your hardware. But still, 
If you wanted to, a new version of the modded Nemez or Nemesis drivers just came out and it unlocks that feature for Polaris, Vega, and the RX 5000 series. Some users did report some buzzing, but others say it works fine. Let me know if you'd like a video on modded drivers. I've never really explored the subject. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for today's video. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Leave a like if you liked it, a comment if you want to talk about today's stories. As usual, you can click right here to see this video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.